Okay, so I wanted to do one more example. Um, we're still in the first section of the exercises, number 14. So this one says, Artos que yunos etumas de santo apostolo, ala idu, ute efagen que ute epien. So again, what I do first is just um, highlight this in orange just to tell them apart. And then I'll go ahead and um, type it here. Oops. If again, with the epian, then just make sure I wrote it right. So let's see. Artos que unos, artos que unos, etu mas de san, etu mas de san, to apostolo, to apostolo, a la idu. Ute efagen ke epien. Ke, sorry. Ute efagen, ute epien. Just copy and paste this and bring it over. All right. And then read it a few times, you know, just to make sure that you get your translation correct first. You want to think through it so that way you can practice the concepts that you learned in the lesson, in your grammar. And so I'll read it a couple, a few times. Artos que yo no se más de santo apostolo ala. Idu ute ef again ki ute epien. Artos ki yunos etu mas de santo apostolo ala idu ute ef again ute epien. <clears throat> so I believe it's saying this bread and wine uh, were prepared were prepared for the apostle. Apostle. But behold. He neither uh, ate nor drank. And so now at this point, what I do is just um, <clears throat> copy and paste um, the verbs that are based on the lesson and parse them. So that way I can go over the concepts that were taught in this lesson to kind of, you know, make sure that it is cemented in um, you know my my mind so that way I can uh, be able to notice them whenever I'm reading the Greek New Testament so that you must this on and then that's the only one that's from this lesson so I think that this is so it has an augment it has the the uh, suffix for the aorist passive indicative and then it has son I mean, it has yes, yeah, son uh, at the end, which I think makes it. Uh, let's see, third plural, yeah, third plural. So I do have a chart here that I use from Logos. I bought them, um, but uh, what you want to do is basically go over the paradigm first in the concept that's. Um, uh, that is uh, taught in the lesson first, and then do it from memory. I forgot to do that. So, uh, eluthen, eluthes, eluthe, eluthemen, eluthete, eluthesan. That's the first error's passive paradigm for, yeah. And then uh, future passive as well. But let's, let me just hasten on here. So, you must this on. So, I was right. It is first aorist, passive, indicative, third plural. And this means, and then, you know, so I'll put a little note that means they were prepared. Um, and then I'll put a little note here to explain why it's first error is passive indicative third plural. Just to help again cement these grammar rules into my, into my mind. That way I can be able to read the New Testament in uh, Greek. So, okay, uh, just put a quick note. It has an augment. Um... Uh, well, it doesn't really have an 
augment it has a the uh, alpha the alpha contracted to an eta because it is uh, in the secondary tense which just means it's past tense um, it has the theta eta suffix and the third plural ending for first aorist passive indicative third plural that way whenever i come across this uh, form in the new testament i'll be able to identify it and translate it properly and again you know the goal is to not translate in one's head you want to think in greek but I think that these, what I'm doing here, is, it's been helpful to me as long as you balance it out with, um, you know, reading a lot in the New Testament, uh, practicing, uh, speaking it with a partner, um, and even visualizing, trying to visualize what you're what you're reading. And here's a helpful tip: my friend, uh, my former pastor, told me that. Um, historical narratives are the best to read in Koine Greek because they're stories and they're easier to, to visualize uh, rather than, you know, like abstract ideas that are found in, um, for example, like the epistles. Uh, those are harder to, to visualize because they're abstract, they're thoughts. Um, but historical narratives kind of paint a picture and help you to visualize the, the language a little bit better. So that's just a little tip there. So I just, uh, then the last thing I do here is just copy this and I use chat GPT. Don't judge me. Just kidding. Um, okay. So what I'll just do is just ask it. Let me see if I can move my <clears throat> there. What I'll do is just ask, um, can you check my coin a Greek to English translation? And then just copy and paste it there. Hit enter. Okay. And you have to be careful. So like with ChatGPT, you have to have some background knowledge in the subject um, that you're inquiring about because if you don't, then it can give you wrong information. But um, if you know you know, you're pretty familiar with the subject. Uh, you can ask it questions like this. That's why I use it. And also because I don't have access to a professor since I'm self-taught. So this is just another tip you can use. So bread and wine were prepared for the apostle, but behold, he neither ate or drank. You're actually captured, you know, and then it'll, if it's wrong, it'll give you suggestions and um, even notes to why <clears throat> they corrected your translation like here. Uh <clears throat> But um, anyway, so that's just another example. Hope you have a great day.